Hey everybody, welcome to episode 67 of the Fiberista Files. Today is Wednesday, February 15th. I'm just going to go ahead and say this right now. That this episode is going to be explicit, so if you are um, listening or watching in front of children, or if you have sensibilities to that sort of thing, no harm, no foul, go ahead and I will see you next week. Okay. Oh, there is lots to do and I, I, I talk about, and I, I do have notes today. I actually have two computers. I have the one that is showing, that is recording the webcam, which is my PC, and then I also have my school-issued Mac that I have um, my notes and some other stuff on. So um, if you see my eyes going kind of crazy, it's because I'm looking in several places at once. So let's get started. Week in review. <laughs> do you remember last week how I was all upset because my toilet was acting funny and it was gurgling and I the plumber had come and he had said that he had fixed it <laughs> yeah no 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 in fact um, by the time last weekend rolled around I was wishing that those were my problems um, when did I record last last Wednesday so last Wednesday Overnight, um, my toilet, which had been acting funny, continued to act funny, it continued to do its little blurgle blurgle bits through the bowl, and I was, you know, continued to be concerned, but I was trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. The plumber said he had fixed the problem, and I said, you know, maybe there's some air in the line or something that just needs to be worked out. No big. Went to school Thursday, came home Thursday afternoon, and it had been a rough day, so I made myself a cookie, and got about my business. And, of course, when I come home, I immediately, I always have to go to the bathroom when I come home, and I flushed the toilet and it didn't go anywhere and I thought that's odd but it was going slow before so maybe if I just walk away for a little while and come back it'll be fine because it has every other time so I went back to the kitchen and I I have to wash dishes before I die because otherwise the dye stains everything in the sink so so I washed a lot of dishes and I thought well, before I die, before I get, you know, everything going, I'll go check on the toilet. Not only had it not drained, even slowly, there was more in it than there had been before. And there was water, poo water, in my shower. Now, this is 7.30 at night. My toilet is full of poo water. My shower is full of poo water. And the only thing I can think of is, what happens if I have to pee? What am I supposed to go outside in the bushes? Like, I had a complete meltdown. I, it had been all week. My toilet was still acting horribly. Uh, it was getting worse. I now had poo water in my apartment. I was not pleased. I had no idea if it was going to continue to rise and go onto the floor. I don't know if it was from washing the dishes. I had no idea. I freaked out. Called the plumber immediately. He was nice and I left his number last time. So, it, by this point, it's almost 8 o'clock. So, I call him at almost 8 o'clock and I'm like, look, I'm really sorry to call you this late, but... Now it's not draining, and I have I have water in my shower. Things are backing up. Can you please come? He's like, yep, yep. Um, he's like, I can be there first thing in the morning. And I'm like, okay, first thing in the morning, okay. Thinking to myself, what the hell am I going to do all night long? There's no way I can go 10 hours without going to the bathroom. So then I call my landlord, and I tell the landlord what's going on. And he, the first time I called him, he was busy, and then the second time I called him, I got him. And that's my neighbor coming home, so the dog's going to bark. Sorry. He says, I've talked to the plumber. The plumber will be there in 15 minutes. And I said, okay, he better be because I'm leaving. I hung up the phone with my landlord and called my husband and burst into tears. Like, I was okay talking to the landlord. I was okay talking to the plumber. As soon as I, my husband said hello, just waterworks. Can I go home? But my husband's like, what is your problem? <laughs> he has no idea what's going on. And I'm like, my toilet's overflowing. And it's in my Somebody's here. Hold on. That was the UPS man with some fiber. Okay, where was I? Um, so, he, my husband had no idea. So I'm telling him that the toilet is backed up, and he's in the shower, and I don't know what to do, and I can't go to the bathroom, my stomach's upset, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> he's like, did you call the landlord? He's always so very calm and chill and, like, logical. I'm like, yes, I called the landlord, and he said the plumber's going to be here in 15 minutes, and I just don't want to. And he's like, calm down. And so I subside into like some pouty, like wet faced moping. And 
He says, this is what you're going to do. You're going to pick everything up off the floor, all of your business stuff, everything, just in case something overflows, get everything, all of your blankets, bedding, everything off the floor, make sure nothing is touching, let the plumber in, and come home. So at quarter past nine on Thursday night, I drove two hours north to the mountains. I got there just after 11 o'clock, still had to shower. Um, I'd eaten on the way, so I didn't have to eat, but I, like, I needed a few minutes just to decompress because I'd driven the entire two hours being upset because once I start being upset about something, I can't let it go. I'm not good at letting things go, <laughs> as you'll see in a bit. Um... So anyways, he finally got me calmed down and went to bed, woke up at 5, had to come back down here to school because I had an in-service day that I absolutely had to be at. So I had already called them and told them that I was going to be a little bit late. So I got to school, instead of being there by 7.45, I was there at 8.30. So I was only like 45 minutes late, but I just, I couldn't even make myself hurry. I was like, you know what? They're just going to have to deal. Like, it was horrible. So I had no idea what my situation was down here. I had no idea if the landlord had even locked my apartment after the plumber had been there. I had no idea what was going on. I had taken, the only thing I had taken with me was my clothes, and I had taken my personal defense weapon because I didn't want that to get stolen. I really didn't figure that anybody was going to be stealing my fiber or my spinning wheel. Both of which would be insured by the business anyway. So I was kind of like, you know, I can't, I don't, cannot mess with taking the wheel home. That's the only other thing in this apartment that's really worth a lot of money. My gun and my spinning wheel. And... So anyway, came back Friday afternoon, I, the landlord was here, I spoke to him, he said everything was fixed, he said that there had been a plug in the drain and that I am the indoor overflow. So there are five apartments in a line and I'm the fifth one in the line before the septic tank. So when the septic tank backs up, it backs up into my apartment first and the alarms for the septic tank are cleared on on the other end of the building. Terrific. So not only was my poo water coming back up, but everybody else's poo water was coming back up into my apartment as well. Really was a fantastic situation. And they had used two of my towels to clean it up. Really? So anyway, I'm good over that. And my husband was coming down Friday night. I called him and told him that everything had been fixed and it was ready to go. And I wouldn't use the bathroom until he got here. He got here at 6.30, so I waited. I got home at 3, and I waited until 6.30, and he came in, and I said, you need to go use the bathroom. <laughs> I had bleached it all. I had bleached everything. I had I had gone to the store and got bleach and gloves and sponges and had just done everything all the way down. They had cleaned it, but it's never clean unless you do it yourself. So anyway, I'm talking an awful lot about poo. I'm sorry, but I, this was just like unbelievably stressful. So I'd clean everything, and I said, when he got here, I said, go use the bathroom. And while you're at it, use the shower. Use the bathroom, says fine, working fine, flushing fine, no problem. So then I went to use it. They had, the plumber forgot to reseat the toilet, which basically means the toilet is on the floor and it's all sealed and everything, and then there's like bolts that attach it that keep it still. <laughs> so I sat down and immediately almost got thrown forward because the whole toilet tipped forward, and I was like, what are you, are you kidding me? Oy. So I spent the rest of the weekend very gingerly moving about in the bathroom, afraid that I was going to break something else. So he finally did come Monday. I called him Monday from school, and he came Tuesday morning and fixed everything. So everything is now working fine. But that was five days of having toilet issues. You just... You don't realize how good you have it until things don't work correctly. And then, oh my god, it's just it's a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. I did get a bonus night at home, and that was kind of nice. But I wish it had been under different circumstances. Okay. Um, so that was my week in review. That's pretty much been the week. <laughs> so why don't we get on to the knitting, shall we? Since I know that's what you're really here for. Ten minutes in. Are you kidding? Okay. Knitting. I am working on the Dairy Raglan and Cowl, which is the knit along that I'm doing with Amy a Froggy Monkey, uh, Amy Froggy Monkey of Knitting in Circles podcast, and Milia Bella of His and Hers podcast, and there are several other podcasters who have joined in as well. Um, Sassy Pants Knitter, uh, Silly Fruit said she was going to join in. Um, Coggy from the High Fiber Diet is joining in sort of as a mentor role because she, she knits lots of beautiful sweaters. Um, there's a bunch of people involved. You don't have to be a podcaster to join in. Everybody's welcome. Come on in. 
join any of the groups, join any of the threads, all of the threads, it doesn't matter. We're all knitting sweaters because we are full of sweater fail. Maybe not Amelia Bella or Coggy, but <laughs> I know Amy and I are. So here's what I have so far. I showed you the cowl last week. This is, let me get to a point where I can actually show you what you're looking at here. Um, that's a sleeve. It's, it's really all bunched up on the needle. So this is what I have so far of the sweater. It looks like a hot mess. The yarn's pretty though. Um, this is the, I should, I should have held it like that, shouldn't I? Cause this is the neckline and you can see right here are the, this is going to be the pattern on the sleeve where the sleeve has these little, um, sort of a leaf pattern. Here we go. A leaf pattern on it. And you can kind of see it there. Um, I've had just some minor problems. Um, I, my counts keep getting off. If I'm not paying super close attention, I miss one of the two increases on either side. So I'm off by one and I'm like, oh crap. So I have to fudge it on the next row. The other issue I'm having is that this is curling really significantly. Now, I should have thought about this before I knit it because I know better. But in the pattern, oh, oh no, don't lose my notes. The pattern pictures do not show any curling of that neckline. That neckline is completely flat. So when they said, you know, just plain knit, I didn't even think about it. I just plain knit. I should have done a couple of garter ridges because this is totally curling. I don't think, even if I can block it out, I don't think it will stay blocked out because that's not the nature of stockinette. That's what it does is it curls. So screw it. I'm going to keep going. Um, if it rolls a little bit, it rolls a little bit. I'm just going to have to deal with it. I, I'm just going to have to deal with it. It's actually knitting up quite quickly and I'm pleased with how fast it seems to be going. Even though I'm at like 202 stitches around, it still seems like it doesn't take me long at all to get around, around. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, and that's good because it's the miles of stock in that that drive me crazy. So we'll see what happens once I get to the full increase. And I had to, um, basically, I had to write down all of the increases, what row and how many stitches each row had, because um, it doesn't say. It just says increased to 234 stitches or whatever. And then that's uh, increasing every other round, and then you switch to increasing every fourth round. But I need to see it more concrete than that. And so I actually just divided it out and subtracted from how many I needed to how many I started and just mapped it all out that way. Um, I don't know if that's helping me, but at least it makes me feel better that every other row gets crossed off a line and see that progress. So I'll take what I can. Uh, the other things that I'm knitting are the Cthulhu mittens are being worked on very slowly, very slowly. And I'll, I, I think I figured out why. So here's give me that. Oh, my nose is itchy. I'm sorry. I have a fiber or something on my nose. Here's the mitt and there's the big Cthulhu. And there's the little one. There's you see his eyes are just poking out. And I finished the increases. So I have made forward progress. But this needle is driving me crazy. It is incredibly stiff and has a butt ton of memory in it. And I can't get the freaking thing to behave itself. Now I have tried to relax it once in the hot water, you know, and you relax it that way. It obviously didn't work. Um, the only other size four needles that I have that aren't double points and I don't want double points because I don't want ladders on the color work. Um, the only other DPNs I have that are size, sorry, the only other needles that I have are size four are on my even star and I really don't want to take the tips off my even star because I keep telling myself I'm going to go back and knit some more. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm probably going to just fight through it because I don't want to have to buy more needles. I had to blow my nose, so I'm going to click out right here. Okay, that's better. Thanks. Um, all right, and then the last thing that I'm actively knitting on this week is something that I've been wanting to work on for quite some time, and I just hadn't made the time yet. So it, it's unexcusable because 
it's an amazing cause and I kind of spearheaded this renewal of this and anyway. I cast on for the Winter Birches Mitts, which is a fingerless knit pattern by Lisa Dykstra. And this is a Ravelry download that I purchased um, in support of Yen for Yarn as she renews her battle with cancer. And this is part of the Knit Along for Yen for Yarn or Cast On for Yen for Yarn, which is a continuous sort of support of Yen for Yarn by knitting any of her patterns and, and giving her a virtual hug. Um, we did this for her when she battled the first time and she beat it, so we're hoping to help her out again. So anyway, I bought the pattern a couple of weeks ago. I hadn't gotten a chance to cast on. Cast on. Finally, I said, you know what? This is, this is ridiculous. You have to cast on. Stop being a jerk. So, I stopped being a jerk. I have cast on. This yarn is Ethereal Fibers yarn. This is um, the Supernal Sock, which is 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend in the 100 Jewels colorway, which is the custom colorway that I got as a prize for being the 100th member in her group. This is the yarn. It's beautiful. Does not look anything like Winter or Birches. I don't care. They're my fingerless mitts. They can be anything they want. All I have so far is about 10 rows of ribbing which doesn't look exciting on that side, but check out the side. It's all very business in the front and party in the back. Um, I'm knitting these. The pattern calls for size 1.5 or 2.5 millimeter needles, and I'm using US 1 or 2.25 millimeter needles. So they're a little bit tighter, but I think they're meant for 8 inch circumference, and my wrists are significantly smaller than that. I have less than a 7 inch wrist, so they're a little bit small, but I don't care. <laughs> Really, it's going to fit me perfectly. And these are going to be for me. If they are too small for me, no big deal. I'll give them to somebody else. But the point is to be knitting free and for yarn, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So that's that. That's really the only other thing that I've worked on this week. I haven't knit a whole lot. Uh, I've been preoccupied with other things. And quite frankly, I've had a pretty shitty week. <gasps> yeah, anyway. I can swear because this is explicit. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> We had a good laugh about that on, on Plurk the other day, a couple weeks ago now, about swearing and offending people. Okay, moving on. Spinning. I did do a little bit of spinning. I know. I know. I'll wait. Let that sink in. Let you recover for a second. I, fin I spun and plied, and I can't remember if I... I did soak it, I think. Yeah, I did. I soaked it. This is Navajo Churro Fiber that I spun into a two-ply. You can see how hairy this is. It's unbelievably hairy. I thought Wensleydale was bad, but this is worse. Oh, it's hairy. So hairy. Um, this is part of my fiber study from the fiber, the fiber samples from the fiber loft, the fiber, fiber loft? Oh, geez, now I can't remember. That I, that I won from a nitty giveaway and I am doing a fiber study where I'm going through all of the fibers in the box and some other ones that I have laying around and sort of getting to know um, some fibers. Navajo Churro, not one of my favorites. Now, I don't mind long wools. I really like long wools. There's a lot of long wools that I really enjoy. Lincoln, um, Blueface Leicester, Corydale, which isn't technically a long wool, but it's got a pretty long staple. Um, Cotswold, all lovely fibers. Navajo Churro feels like over-permed hair. It's crispy, it's wiry, it's very long. I mean, I when I soaked it, it did soften up a little bit, and if I'd used hair conditioner, it probably would be even softer, but really, I just don't really like it. I do like the color. I don't know if you can see in that, that there is some variation in the color. Now, it looks pretty straightforward to you, but um, there is some marbling going on in there where there's some more oatmeal and some more cream sections. Um, and that was kind of nice. It's not enough to make me ever want to knit this. I don't even like touching it. I'm sure that not all Navajo churro is like this. The Fleece and Fiber source book was vehement in stating that all fibers vary not only between breeds, but also within a breed that some may be lovely and wonderful and some maybe not. So this particular sample that I got was very unlovely. 
So, but it's done, and I will be writing up that last post about how it spun and all that um, soon. I'm not going to promise you when, because every time I promise you when, I don't do it. So, anyway, I have moved on to the next fiber, and this fiber I pulled randomly out is Oxford. And I already really like Oxford, and let me show you why. Oxford has a personality disorder, <laughs> because... I don't know if you can, I hope you can see this. I really hope you can see this. Right in here, this section is all very crimpy. It's crimped, okay? Oh, you can see it best right there. That's very crimpy, back and forth, back and forth. But the tips are curly. They have little loops, they curl around themselves. So it goes crimpy, 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 curly. This is a whole heap of personality. I very rarely see wools that are both crimpy and curly. I can't freaking wait to get this going. I have already washed this. This is washed. I don't struggle a whole lot to get all of the veggie matter out. You can see that there's still some veggie matter in there. I don't stress about it. Um, I have not combed this or prepared it in any way, but I will be doing that shortly. I'm really looking forward to... You can see that in there. I'm really looking forward to spinning this fiber and seeing just what that crimp curl combo does to the fiber. This is not a fiber that I've ever played with before, so very exciting. Um, okay, gross. You already saw that I got a box from that, um, one of my suppliers. That's a small box. I've been getting lots of big boxes. In fact, I got my trifecta of awesome yarn, uh, fiber, for this month, and I'll be dying it next week to get it shipped out by the end of the month, but I bought 10 pounds, and I just want to show you what 10 pounds of fiber looks like, because it's awesome. Ugh. This is 10 pounds of fiber. I'm not going to tell you what fiber. It's white. You can see it. Oh my gosh. I love it. This is my fiber. Ah, I think this is so freaking great. I don't often buy 10 pounds of anything. I usually buy smaller amounts because I try to get a variety of stuff. But let me see. This is the little... They stick a little card around it so that you can... Um, easily find the end. And oh, it's so soft. I just love it. You have absolutely no idea what this is. And I love that too. So here's your fiber. Spoiler. You knew you were getting fiber. It's not really that much of a spoiler. But here's what 10 pounds looks like. It's fantastic. So that has to be divided into four ounce braids. And then it has to be dyed and dried and shipped and Jet Girl 1313, also known as Katie Knitting on the Fly, my fibery bestie, has already offered to help me. Now she's in the club, so she's going to get spoiled because she's going to know what it looks like. But I'm going to have slave labor. I'm perfectly okay with that. All right. What else? Oh, I'm almost done with the bouncing for Brody yarn. I have two more skeins to dye. That probably won't happen tonight, but I do think it will happen tomorrow. So. By Saturday, fingers crossed, everybody who ordered Bouncing with Brody on that pre-order should have a shipping notice in the mail or in, the, in their email. That should be everybody. I will be doing Bouncing Brody again. I'm getting a lot of emails every day about, are you going to have more? I will have more. It will be in March. I can't do it right now. It takes a lot of time to dye Bouncing with Brody, and I don't make any money off of it. So in order for me to make some money, I need time to dye up stuff for my regular shop updates as well. And I really wish that I could dye this all the time. I really do want to dye more for you folks, but I just need to be realistic about my needs as well. So, um, long and short of it, I will be doing more Bouncing with Brody, but it won't be until March. And I will be sure to podcast before that happens so that you have a chance to get it. Um, I don't think I'll be offering quite as much. I did 56 games the first time. I think I'll do probably 44 skeins this next time to have an even 100. I think that would be nice. I think to be able to donate a thousand dollars to the Bouncing with Brody, Mommy Needs Yarn, Autism Speaks, No More Tears, Fundraising Goodness would be awesome. So definitely look for that in March. Um, okay. Also, I have not, I didn't, I, I totally forgot to put dye pots in my notes. I'll do that now. There will be a shop update. It will be this Thursday, which is tomorrow, and it will be at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, traditional time for an update. 
I have not a lot, but I have a really nice selection, and I have some new stuff for you and some stuff you haven't seen in a while. So, why don't I show you what's available, shall I? Okay. The first thing that I've got, I have not braided up yet, sorry, it's going to be kind of a hot mess, is Poetic, which is one of my most popular colorways down on my, one of my most popular fibers. This is Poetic in Superwash Merino Tencel. My light is crap this week. I'm sorry, it's the same light that I always use, but for some reason it seems to not be going so well. So, Bouncing with Brody, it is dyed in bright purple, silver, sort of a charcoal-y, silvery gray, and what's the what's black but really because the superwash merino tencel doesn't take the dye the same it's an almost black so that's what I call it I call it almost black so and it's completely washed out on the screen but superwash merino tencel wonderful fiber so I'll have two scans of that because I did one for a custom order I did up a little bit of Polworth I have some more Polworth I love Polworth I love the feel of this fiber um, I absolutely love it. I wish that I would keep a braid for myself so I could spin it, but I haven't yet. This braid is, I have three of these. This is Boardwalk Roses, which I think you've seen in yarn. I don't know if you've seen it in fiber before. It is sort of a hot pink cherry, kind of a dark hot pink. A it's really hard to describe this color. It's sort of in between pink and purple. Like it's the transition color between pink and purple. A dusky blue and some undyed areas as well as some sand areas. This is supposed to reflect roses, the beach, the ocean, the sandy beach, and cloudy skies or something like that. I don't know. Board, boardwalk roses. That's what it's called anyway. So I have three of these. I also in Polworth did up some more old appliances. And I thought it took the dye really well in Corydale, but look at it in Polworth. Isn't that beautiful? Really fine fibers are non, I can't pronounce this word correctly, medulated. Or they have no, the medulla, which is a hollow core inside the fiber. And so there's more, the core is solid. And the fine wools, merino, polworth, other wools like that, because they have a solid core, it take the dye exceptionally well. I was reading this in Spinoff Magazine last, last month. And so they take the dye beautifully. So here it is, dyed in sort of a light caramelly chocolate brown, an old faded green, and that rusty, vintagey brick red. Pretty simple. Uh, you may have seen Diane from Knittables, sorry Fiber, um, spin this up. She really enjoyed it, and I know that Amy Froggy Monkey of Knitting in Circles has some. I have not yet seen her spin that up, but that's been pretty popular, and you want it, I'll dye it for you. Okay, I also did one that I haven't done in fiber before, and I don't know what possessed me. I just looked at the fiber, and I was like, let's try this. This is White Spruce Top. It's the 60% Merino, 60% Superwash Merino, 30% Bamboo, and 10% Nylon. This is the Trickster colorway, which is bright orange, violet purple, and black. It's kind of a Halloween color, but it doesn't have to be. It can be anything you want it to be. If these are your school colors or anything. I think it would be great. And there's a lot of variation in the fiber because the bamboo doesn't take the dye, so there's a lot of depth to it. And this is so soft. It's amazingly soft. So that's Trickster, and I have three of those. The other color that I did, the other colorway I did is brand new. I had leftover purple dye and a teeny bit of black dye, and so I reached into my dye covers to see what else I could get that would go with it and came out with Shocking Hot Pink, and a, a neutral, which is sort of an olive taupe. I happened to be watching Sassy Pan's Knitter, which is a video podcast put on by Silly Fru. Um, she, I guess she used to be audio, and now she's video. I've only been watching her since she became video, got to be honest. Um, I was watching Silly Fru, and so in the, her most recent podcast, she had just created a survivor bracelet, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and it was hot pink. And so she works for the Army National Guard, hence the taupey, olivey run. And I was like, you know what? This just looks like sassy pants. So this colorway, I messed up the label. I'm going to rewrite it. But this is this is sassy pants. This is the name of the fiber. So let me show you if I can get that there. It is hot pink, violet purple, sort of a 
olivey, taupey, greenish, brownish clay color. There are some lighter areas. They're not quite undyed, but they're definitely faded. And then there's little teeny, tiny pops of black in there as well. So that's this fiber. I really like this fiber. I don't think Silly Fru spins, but Silly Fru, if you're watching this and you want it, I'll make it for you in your eye. No problems. So that's Sassy Pants. And then I did a custom order, and I can't remember if she wanted one or two, so I'll have at least one, if not two, of the Summit, which is a perennial favorite colorway, which is done in sort of a cadet gray-blue, black, and bright pops of gold with some undyed areas as well. You know, if I would hold still, that camera would probably focus a little bit, huh? Let's do it this way. No, that's pretty accurate. That's much more accurate. And this one, the Sassy Pants and the Trickster are all done on the 603010 Superwash Merino Bamboo Nylon base. Excuse me. Last week I showed you, um, I will have one of these. This is the Chosen one, which is the Hunger Games inspired colorway. It is the second book, Catching Fire, that was the inspiration for this colorway. This is in Superwash Merino Tencel. And I also did the Chosen one in yarn. This is it reskained. Um, same colors, has a little bit of a different effect. And this is the Silver Maple Sock Yarn, which is 603010 Superwash Merino Bamboo Nylon, but in yarn. And then the only other thing I have, I have one skein, and I can't even tell you which one you're going to get. I dyed up Kennebec, which I had done on Bulky before, but then I, this time I did it on Silver Maple Sock, again the 603010. And I have one reskained and one unreskained, so who knows which one you'll get. Um, I have one that's a custom order, and the other one will be up in the shop. So there's that. It starts out with a rich, chocolatey, earthy brown. Fades into sort of a spearmint, tealy green. And then fades from there into a blue-green, and then finally into a very pale blue. So let me see if I can show you. This probably will show you better. exactly how it looks. Okay. That's it for this week's shop update. That was everything that I could get done when I wasn't dying grouts for Brody. So, <laughs> um, I have, I have a bunch of fiber. I have bought some more lace yarn. I know that I haven't had lace in the shop yet, but spring's coming. So I know that you'll be getting ready for some spring shawls and things. Um, in case you're wondering, I'm wearing my Wendy Johnson summer mystery shawl that I knit. Probably not, in case you were. So I will be getting lace. I also, the thing that just came was a skein, was a cone of the, I think it's 70-30 alpaca lace with silk. So it's alpaca, 70% alpaca and 30% silk, which is the base that I dyed up the first round of the Trifecta of Awesome Yarn Club. I had dyed up a blue semi-solid and I will be dyeing more of that. Um, I've had a request from a couple of people who are allergic to wool and they said, listen, can you, or sheep's wool, and they said, can you dye me something else? And I said, sure. So that will be in the shop in coming weeks as well. Next week for me is school vacation week, so I don't have classes, but I will be down here because I have drama practice from 9 to 12 every day during vacation. So I will not be able to be home and be lazy in the mountains. I'll have to be down here working, but... It'll be a good opportunity for me to get stuff done, especially the trifecta stuff, which needs to get done. So I'm okay with it. I'll deal. So will my husband. We'll, we'll be all right, I think. <laughs> Barring any plumbing problems, I think we'll be all right. Okay. Two more sections. I have processes and grabby hands. And in processes, the reason I have this computer here is because the processes I'm actually going to read this week because it's been a couple weeks coming because I've had trouble figuring out exactly what and what I was going to say and how I was going to say it. Well, I think I finally hit upon a non-ranty, totally reasonable way to say what, to share a process that I think we all should do, not just something that I personally do, although I do follow this process. Um, Anyway, so I'm going to actually read this. So I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm reading. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> My processes today is, process today is, rules for giving iTunes reviews. Now, 
I'm an English teacher. I am literally a word expert. So I feel like I'm qualified to talk about this. So what I have here are some rules for iTunes reviews. Us podcasters, we podcasters, love when you give us reviews. Star ratings, full reviews, we love the feedback. Helps us out a lot. That being said, there are some rules that should be followed when you're leaving a podcast review. So I thought I might share those rules with you and explain the theory behind them. So here are the rules for iTunes reviews. Rule number one, review your purpose. The purpose of a review is to help other viewers see at a glance if this podcast is something they might enjoy. If you are trying to give feedback to the podcaster, consider emailing him or her instead. Don't talk to a podcaster in the review section of iTunes. Remember, too, that what you're reviewing is the podcast, not the podcaster themselves. We podcasters share what we are doing with you folks. That doesn't give you the right to judge us as people. Stick to the knitting. Rule number two. Be concrete. What specifically about the podcast did you enjoy or not? Don't say, it's good, or I love this podcast. Instead, say, she has lots of energy, or the segments are fast-paced and keep me entertained. This specific information helps the reader make a more informed decision before downloading an episode. Rule number three. Oh, hang on. Paper's caught up. Rule number three. Avoid hyperbole. Words like always and never aren't usually accurate and should be avoided. She always has great knitting probably isn't true, even though we all wish it were so. Ditto negative feedback. Her podcast is filled with rants and criticisms is also too strong for what's really happening. Rule well, number four. Don't gush or bash too much. Over-the-top positivity, like, OMG, I love her, in all caps, is easily ignored by the reader and is thus unhelpful to your favorite podcaster. The potential subscriber wants information and not blind fangirl emotion. The flip is also true. Comments like, she's a snarky, angry person, don't give the reader any info about the podcast, which is subject the subject of the review. For questions, see rule number one. Finally, rule number five, follow the conventions of standard written English. Proper use of the standard English conventions is vital to your review. Being able to spell, construct, and punctuate sentences correct correctly is what separates us from the apes. For example, this comment, I enjoy this podcast more when there isn't constant reference to other podcasters, which apparently have a little click going on, knitting on the fly, dramatic dits, fiberista files, his and hers. These warm women comprise the main click of podcasters that excludes listeners and instead focuses on other podcasters. This is filled with mistakes. Being an English teacher, I've corrected these mistakes. Here's what it should say. I enjoy this podcast much more when there aren't constant references to other podcasters who apparently have a little click going on. Katie of Knitting on the Fly, Stephen of Dramatic Knits, Heather of the Fiberista Files, and Sean and Melissa of His and Hers comprise the main click of podcasters that exclude viewers and focus on each other. Oh, it should say, who exclude others. I apologize. And focus on each other. Poor use of the English language makes you look and sound stupid. And who's going to care what you have to say if you look and sound stupid? That's my process. I hope you enjoyed our little lesson on how to leave an iTunes review. Feel free to email me at heather at highlandhandmaids.com or highlandhandmaids at gmail.com if you agree or disagree with these. Don't leave it on the review. That's not the point of the review. Hence. 
Oh, it's going the wrong way. That would have been great if I'd done that effectively. Rule number one. Just say it. So, all that leaves for us today is grabby hands. I did that great. I didn't, I didn't rant at all. I'm very zen today. Grabby hands. I'm going to come right back because my grabby hands is in the other room. Sorry, it was a little light reading I had before bed. This book has been reviewed before. I'm not reviewing this book. I'm telling you why you should buy it. This is Sock Yarn One Skein Wonders, 101 patterns that go way beyond socks. It is edited by Judith Durant, corrector, creator rather, of the best-selling One Skein Wonder series. And there are other books in this series, 101 One Skein Wonders, 101 Designer One Skein Wonders, and 101 Luxury Yarn One Skein Wonders. Now, I've bookmarked everything that I thought I might want to knit. Holy crap! I did not think when I was slipping through this book in the store that I there would ever be that many things that I wanted to knit. I'd actually put this book back several times, but my husband on his way to visit me last weekend, realizing that I'd had a literally a shitty week, decided to buy me a present because he loves me and he spoils me rotten. So he spent half an hour in Books A Million, which is the store that replaced our borders when borders closed. He spent half an hour in Books A Million in the knitting section looking for a book whose cover he didn't recognize. <laughs> How sweet is he? Love him. So he bought me this book because I do have a lot of sock yarn and I don't knit socks very quickly. So he thought maybe there was something else that I might want to knit. Now, I'm not reviewing this book, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. I will say that I, you can see, I think here, if I do it this way, that each different department, each type of item is separated out by a different color chapter. The first chapter is mitts, gloves, and cuffs. The second chapter, which is in the blue section, is scarves and neck warmers. The third is small wonders, knits for kids. Um, then bags and purses. And then finally... Um, there's an appendix section too. They're all different designers, most of whom I haven't heard of, but that doesn't mean they're bad. I'm not terribly impressed with the photography in this book. For example, this is the Hera headband, and this is the only picture you get. Now, it looks like it might be awesome, but I really would like to see the top and maybe the other side of the head. And like this picture, this teeny little corner is the headband, and the rest is all of her face. We're knitting less face, people. But I think I had one, two, three, four, five, six. I had almost a dozen things that I immediately saw and thought I might want to knit. This will be a lot of gift knitting uh, as well as some process knitting. Um, things that I think would be great for gifts when I'm bored or I don't have any idea or I've got that one skein of yarn that I really want to knit and I don't know what I want to knit out of it. I really love these socks. These are the... Busy Bee socks. They are very intricate. They've got cable details all over it. And then the coolest part, I'm going to try not to lose my bookmark here, is that over here, this little bit that you have a hard time seeing is actually a little bee detail done with your knitting. So it looks like there's a little bee on your sock. How cute is that? That really wouldn't be a gift because that looks pretty intricate. But um, I really love some of the simple scarves that they had, like the Erica scarf, which really utilizes that one skein of Sauber Ball or um, Noro or something that you've had kicking around and it's a reversible pattern, so easy peasy. Um, there were also some techniques that I really liked. I'm gonna definitely try this one. It's called the Lifted Stitch Scarf, but it's not a slip stitch where you just slip the stitch and then it creates a raised knit. This actually is done by, um, you knit you knit like you normally would and then on the purl row you actually drop the purl ridge down three stitches three rows and then purl that so you you knit like normal and then you pull it out and, and redo it it just was a very interesting technique a little bit of a twist on a lifted stitch so um, I really want to try that and I really like the way that yarn made that look um, I also really love this hat I don't know how this hat would ever look on me but I think it's adorable and really, really is a great use of highly variegated sock yarn, which I make and sell a lot of. Uh, I'm trying to see what else is in here that I really loved. 
I also really love this lace pattern. It's called, a, I think it's called as, as photo lace. It's this weird wonky little O-ring lacy bit. And I think it's adorable. I might start with the coaster and not the placemat, but I just thought it was kind of cool. So there's some cool stuff in here. There's some really horrible stuff in here. I'm not going to lie. Um, the Southwest Cactus Cozy was one that I was kind of like, Yeah, those are garter stitch cacti. Probably won't be knitting that one. But overall, I was really impressed with the book. And my husband actually said that there were patterns in here that he liked. There was a basket weave glove that he liked and some blocks that you can make for babies. And So yeah. So Sock Yarn One Skein Wonders, you should get it. The other thing that he picked me up, he also got me a Books A Million in... I actually saw Silly Fru on the Sassy Pants in her podcast say that she had made one herself. I don't know how to make these, but my husband bought me one. This is what's called a survivor bracelet. Now mine is, I'll take it off to show you, is beautiful rainbow. Gorgeous. Um, he knows I like color. I have a thing for color. It is a bracelet that is made out of a bungee cord. So if you get an emergency situation or a survival situation, like when you're camping or hiking or your dog broke his leash, <laughs> or your belt breaks and your pants are loose. If you get an emergency situation, this bracelet actually unties and becomes a usable length of bungee cord. All conveniently ensconced right there on your wrist. I freaking love this thing. He said it was $3.99 and you got it at Books A Million, but you can buy them all over the place, online and in stores. I know L.L. Bean has a bunch. Um, if you Google survival bracelets, they'll probably show up. There was one company I found online that makes them and sells them custom, but they're like $35 a piece. I wouldn't get those ones, especially when they're so inexpensive. But definitely check them out. Try them out. It's pretty comfortable. Um, it's a little bulky because, again, I have really small wrists, so even the small is quite a bit larger than I really need. But it's not so big that it'll fall off. And uh, I really love it. So just another sign that my husband was thinking about me. So I wear it all the time. Okay, I'm at 49 minutes, which is a pretty decent size episode for me, so I'm going to let it go here. I hope you have a great week. Don't forget about the shop update, which is going to be tomorrow night, Thursday the 16th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I will see you next week. Might be a little bit earlier in the day because I should be home around noon. Noon, 1 o'clock. Um, I will be doing more bouncing for Brody and March 3rd through the 10th. Well, I just remember this right now. March 3rd through the 10th is podcaster podcasting in pajamas week. A bunch of people, we just got together and decided this. Um, we're going to hope that people will podcast in their pajamas the week of March 3rd through the 10th. So anytime that week I will be podcasting my pajamas. I'm not going to look any different than I look right now. Same sweatshirt and pajama pants that I wear all the time. But at least I can say that I'm podcasting in my pajamas. So maybe I'll wear my ducky slippers. Well, I'll see. So until next week, guys, happy spinning and knitting. And thanks for tuning in.